Distress and Urgency Procedures on Radio. Not just amateur radio, but all radio communications. There is a, a set of procedures which <coughs> are internationally adhered, adhered to for distress and urgency situations. I'm in the document again. Uh, amateur radio operating procedures on the ACMA website and it's actually called emergency procedures but we don't actually have an emergency call on radio any radio we have a distress call and we have an urgency call a distress call is the use of a distress signal. The use of a distress signal indicates that a ship, aircraft or person is threatened by grave and imminent danger and requires assistance. In telegraphy or digital modes, uh, SOS, it doesn't mean save our souls, it's just SOS. And in voice, it's Mayday and normally sent three times so uh, if you were going to put out a distress call because you are in grave or imminent danger you would call Mayday, Mayday, Mayday this is followed by your call sign one to three times and you would put all of the information about your predicament into the message. The distress message consists of the name or other identification of the station, like the name of the ship, the uh, registration of the aircraft, uh, uh, particulars of your position, your longitude, your latitude. We're at the bottom of, uh, of uh, Uluru uh, Rock. Uh, we're, um, we're in Botany Bay. Uh, the nature of the distress, oh, we're in a vessel and we're sinking, we're taking on water, uh, the car's rolled, the car's rolled on such and such a highway, 100 kilometres north of so-and-so, and you've got two injured and uh, uh, two other people. Uh, all the information, it's, it's your responsibility, if you're the person calling the Mayday, to to give all the information you possibly can in order for, for someone to provide you with assistance. If you are not in uh, grave or imminent danger and you put out a distress call, and it has happened, you could um, be in serious trouble because when someone puts out a mayday, uh, it all stops out. Uh, there'll be search aircraft, helicopters, uh, people on uh, you know the state emergency services, the police. Everyone will uh, ACMA has officers that go out. Everyone would doing be doing everything they can to assist you. And if it turns out to be that it wasn't warranted, um, then uh, you could be in real strife because you've cost uh, the community a lot of a lot of money. If, on the other hand, you are the recipient, recipient of a Mayday call as an amateur radio operator, so you're sitting there and you're listening to your radio and you hear, Mayday, 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 this is uh, the good ship Lollipop, the good ship Lollipop, we're 40 kilometres off the coast of Sydney, we're taking in water, our stay afloat time is, is uh, 15 minutes. Um, what do you do? You're a radio amateur. Well... At first, you do nothing because, frankly, you're not the best person to handle this situation. And so what you're hoping for is that someone else in a better position will answer them quickly and deal with it. If no one answers it, then you are obliged. You are required to answer them, take down as many particulars as you can about the person in distress and pass that information along to the appropriate authorities which might be uh, the local uh, marine rescue um, 
uh, you know, if you're not sure what to do, just, just ring Triple O. Uh, do whatever you can to get some. You're not going to be able to help them sitting behind with the amateur radio station other than to uh, pass the information along to the authority as quickly as possible with as much information as you can uh, to help the person in distress. You can communicate with them. If there is no one else there communicating with them, you can communicate with them and ask them if they need any... Uh, you can clarify their location. You can clarify how long the vessel's going to stay afloat, how long the plane's going to be in the air for, or, or, or how, how much, if they're a vehicle and on land, how much water do they have, do they need food, whatever. Is anyone injured, someone bleeding, whatever. And you can operate on any frequency. Uh, all the rules, all the radio licensing rules go out of the window when there's a mayday. You can tra if you hear them on a non-amateur radio frequency, you can transmit to them and offer them assistance. In fact, not only can you do that, if no one else answers them, you are obliged to contact them and do everything that you can to assist. Tell you some of the places you could contact. For, uh, if you're the recipient of a distress call, a mayday, if you don't know, I would simply dial triple O. So I don't know what I'm doing, but I've just heard this. Um, but you can contact the Aviation Rescue Services on this number and the Marine Rescue Services on, on that number. And if you're panicking and don't know what to do, just call triple O, talk to someone and let them know you've received a distress call. Just remember, a distress call, though, only applies to grave or imminent danger. And the distress call is Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. And in telegraphy, it's SOS, SOS, SOS. Okay. Now, one level down from... A distress call or mayday call is the urgency call. Urgency call means it's urgent, but there's not grave or imminent danger uh, to life. For example, it might be a vessel uh, 10 kilometers offshore and they've run out of fuel or their motor's broken down. Or it might be a vehicle um, crossing the Simpson Desert and the vehicle's broken down. Now they've got plenty of water, they've got plenty of food, they've got shade, uh, the vessel's not going to sink. So it, it, it doesn't have to be all stops out. They need help. But we don't need to send helicopters and planes and everything else out there uh, quick smart. We just need to get to them and to help them. In which case it's a urgency call. Now in telegraphy or a data mode that would be XXX, XXX, XXX followed by the the uh, call sign of the station or pan if it's radio telephony pan 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 this is and your station call sign. The big difference between an urgency call and a distress call. Now, the amateur service has given some special uh, considerations when there's natural disasters. Now, rather than read all of this out, I'll let you read it. But basically, and I'll leave it on screen, or you can pause and read out that paragraph. Basically, it means that if a rescue organisation asks you for assistance to pass traffic or messages, uh, then you are permitted to do it. And you can actually solicit it. You can actually, if you know there's a disaster going on and you know that local radio communications has uh, been affected, cellular mobile phone towers have been burnt down, and you want to offer ass assistance, you can go out and solicit your services uh, to the community to provide communications. Uh, that's the only time that you can actually go out and solicit, it, solicit amateur radio services 
is when you're helping or offering to help in a natural disaster. So I'd suggest you just pause that and read it. The only thing that you could get in an exam is it's okay for you as an amateur station to solicit your services to a rescue organization or an authority to help with their emergency in an emergency with their radio communications. That's it for part eight. I hope uh, you're enjoying this course. I know regulations can be a little bit dry, but we have to learn them, folks. It's as simple as that. But I hope this is just making it a little bit easier for you anyway. I'll catch you back on the next one on uh, part nine. This is Ron VK2DQ.